Dictionary.com says since the 60s, stupid is synonymous with extreme. And so I'll say it again, this Rossi R92 and 454 Casul has stupid power. And if you'll stick around just a few minutes, I'll show you what I mean. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll have an adventure or two that will make even a grown man smile. And we'll find out in a minute if I'm smiling for, out of joy or pain. Sweet. Well, as things happen in the video world, it took a couple of takes to get, to get this right. And so the barrel isn't warm, it's hot. And, uh, and I wanna take a minute to say thanks to my friend Larry. He picked one of these up in Conroe, Texas, and uh, gave me a call and said, if you wanna drive up, I will uh, loan it to you for a few weeks to make some content with. And so Larry, thank you very much. And so one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the recoil. I have actually calculated some recoil figures with the ammo that we're gonna to shoot today. And, um, and it's quite dramatic, the information that we're gonna talk about there. But speaking of, um, speaking of ammo, let's take a quick look. And I've got three things, three ammo, three types of ammo we're gonna to shoot today. Well, number one is gonna be some hand loads that are, uh, are topped with a 240 grain XTP mag. Now that XTP mag bullet is rated up to 2200 feet per second. And uh, you'll see when we look at velocity data and stuff like that a little bit, that um, we needed every bit of that 2200 feet per second. And then we have Buffalo Bore 325 grain hard cast. Uh, these are, this is a beast. It has a published velocity of 1525 out of a revolver but we're gonna shoot it out of a 20 inch barreled Rossi R92. And uh, I can tell you, because I've already done the homework, that it's gonna be a lot faster than that. And then finally, we're gonna shoot some lightweight 45 Colt loads, just to show you what this guy is capable of on the downside. And uh, that's what makes this what I, what I would almost call the ideal pistol caliber carbine but uh, we'll talk about that in, in a, another video. So I made the same mistake here with the 454 Casul as I did with my Rossi 357 Magnum, and that was assuming that it was gonna be able to shoot basically any kind of 38 special round. And so I assumed that this guy here was gonna shoot 454 or 45 Colt rounds, be able to cycle them through the, out of the tube, into the chamber, etc but it will not. And so I was gonna talk to you about these great uh, round nose lead bullets and how sweet they were to shoot, but they will not cycle in this gun. And so I brought out the, some other loads that my son had, and this is a 45 Colt load with a 240 grain XTP mag. It's exactly the same bullet that we have been shooting in the 454 Casul, and you can see how much longer the 454 Casul is than the 45 Colt, but this guy won't chamber either because it just the uh, the ogive of the uh, bullet will not engage the cartridge stop. So, with that said, and we'll try to figure out a bullet that we can load in the 45 Colt to run through this Rossi. But with that said, let's just shoot some reactive targets with the same rounds that we've been seeing. I might also ring some steel along the way. You gotta love it, even if it does make your shoulder hurt. Let's get back to the rest of the video. 
But right now, let's take a close look at the R92 from Rossi, the 454 Casul. It has some unique features. And right off the bat, you can see that recoil pad because it's going to be needed with a heavy recoiling, lightweight carbine we've got here. But it's all stainless. It's built on the Winchester 1892 frame. Beautiful gun. And that mag tube is gigantic. You can actually load from the bottom of the mag tube, but in order to do that, you have to actually unscrew the mag tube. And I think that was to eliminate some problems they had in the past where the mag tube may have come loose. And I understand the mag tube also screws into the receiver instead of just being pinned. Really nice design and well done by Rossi. It's got a bead front sight, buckhorn rear, semi buckhorn rear. 454 Casul. Beautiful gun. Holds eight in the, in the mag tube, one in the chamber. And these guys are hard to come by. Okay, the big story with the Rossi 454 Casul to me is recoil. Um, I certainly love having the power potential of that cartridge, but can we handle it in a 6.4 pound rifle? Because it is the lightest rifle of its kind. There's nothing else like it. Yes, the, uh, the uh, Bighorn Armory uh, Model 90A, I think it is, uh, is also chambered in 454 Casul, but it is a uh, it's an eight pound, six ounce uh, rifle. This is six pounds, four ounce, and that extra two pounds would go a long way towards mitigating recoil. But let's talk about the velocity of the rounds that we're gonna shoot today. Um, I shot uh, through the chronograph, three shot, three shot average, the uh, 240 grain XTP mag, and that's the load that you saw me shoot earlier. Um, it has a, a muzzle velocity of a three shot average of 2,122 feet per second. Then we have Buffalo Bore 325 grain um, uh, factory ammo. Three shot average with those was 1,830 feet per second. That's a beast. 1,830 feet per second, 325 grain bullet. And then previously, um, we chronographed my son's hand loads with a 45 Colt, and they came out at uh, 1,490 feet per second. And so throwing those numbers into the calculation, and by the way, I did have to sacrifice a buffalo bore round in order to get recoil data, because the uh, one component of the recoil calculation is the volume or the uh, weight of pow the powder charge. And if you guys ask me about how that calculation is done, I have no idea, but it, there's a, um, a website that has some great um, some great calculations for you, but in order to calculate muzzle or, or recoil energy, you have to know the volume of powder. And so I had deconstructed one of these, weighed the powder charge and threw it in. And so with that said, the recoil foot pounds of energy for the, for the uh, 45 Colt hand loads, 15.24 foot pounds. The recoil for the for the rounds that you saw me saw me shoot earlier, the uh, 240 grain XTP mags, that um, recoil is 21.8 foot pounds. Now the 45 Colt recoil falls between uh, 260 Remington and 270 Winchester. These hand loads right here, the uh, 240 grain XTP mags, that recoil falls between 308 Winchester and 30-06. Okay, and those rifles, all the rifles that I'm going to mention here are seven pound rifles. And then the 325 grain buffalo bore, that recoil energy fell between the 4570 of some load. It doesn't specify in their table, it doesn't specify what load that was, but it falls between the 4570 and the 300 Win Mag. So uh, we're going to shoot those here in a minute. And so let's shoot, I've been putting this off, but let's shoot some of the Buffalo Bore, 325 grain uh, guys. And this, again, this is this recoil falls between the 4570 and the 300 Win Mag. So here we go. I'm gonna shoot three rounds on steel with the 325 grain Buffalo Bore hard cast. Oh my. Oh, 
yes. Oh yeah, I made that dance at about uh, 75 yards. Wow. Okay, so you can see that is, that is a beast of a round. And that's why it has a recoil energy in excess of 26 foot-pounds. Wow. Well, I had to come back down here to uh, fix a problem with the, with the uh, 45 Colt in the Rossi. And so you've already seen that footage. But I wanted to show you what I picked up. And in a few minutes, I'm going to shoot at a water jug right there on the end of the uh, bridge timber. And this thing right here is going to fly back towards the camera. And so you can watch for it. And see if you can see when it comes your way. Now let's get back to the video. All right, let's shoot this 454 Casul Buffalo Boar, 325 grain hard cast through that string of water jugs and see what happens. I'll tell you what, that is an incredible round. Those bullets, I believe, are made by cast performance. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure they are. And uh, can you imagine the devastation of that going through soft tissue? But we went through five or six jugs, something like that. And uh, that was pretty darn impressive. And I didn't really expect to capture this, but uh, there you have it. The Buffalo bore, 325 grain hard cast bullet at 1800 plus feet per second. Now I'm gonna go set up and shoot that one gallon water jug with a blast soda on top of it. I'm gonna start the GoPro this time, or the uh, slow motion this time, and we'll see how high that uh, Mountain Dew goes off of the top of the water jug. So we're gonna try this XTP mag 240 grain XTP mag. Hopefully it will open up at this velocity in a single water jug, but we'll find out what kind of what kind of carnage it wreaks. Now let me go put those Mountain Dew back on top of the jug. All right, here we go. So what do I think about the Rossi R92 in 454 Casul? Well, you already know that I like Rossi's because I've got one. And, um, and by the way, I hope you guys don't judge this one for not chambering those short 45 Colt rounds. Um, all we need to do is to change the bullet, shape of the bullet nose, and those are going to work just fine. And, um, but I love it. It's well made. Uh, I don't know if there have been a lot of guys that have commented about Rossi quality in the past, but I can just, I just imagine that it's all in the past because these, um, my, my Rossi and this one right here, Larry's, are really well made. And you can tell some engineering went into them, the fact that this is now screwed into the receiver down here and has a threaded uh, mag tube retention. So what a fine gun. Would love to have one myself. Um, and I, they are hard to find. And uh, with that said, um, please subscribe if you haven't already. 
And one of the big things you guys can do for me, and it's free, is just click on the like button, the thumbs up. If you'll just click on that, it sends a really important message to YouTube that folks are liking my videos. And so um, if you don't mind doing that for me, I would appreciate it. And if you would like to support me on Patreon to help pay for things like, I bought two boxes of this for this and another video, $140, whoa. Now I'm not complaining. I'm just saying if you would like to help support me financially uh, to offset some of those costs, there is a link in the description to my Patreon page. And uh, with that said, I guess I will see you in the next video.